Hey guys, this is Nick with IndieGameBundles.com, your number one spot for information about all indie bundles. In this episode of 10 Indie Minutes, we'll be looking at a very interesting platformer puzzler called 8-Bit Night, which is by Dennis Grachev, and we're going to jump right in and start the first level, and I'll show you why this is so unique. So this game plays sort of like a cross-pollination between something like Fez and Load Runner. And you see the, the mechanic here is the player can actually flip the whole level on the axis that you see in the middle. And that ghostly representation of your character on the other side of the level is where you'll end up when you flip it. Now it sounds like such a simple premise, right? You see your character on the other side and you can just simply flip to get over to it. But this game is very easy to play but tough to master. And as you can see your real only goal is to pick up all of those what they're calling pixels. Uh, but they look like little gold bricks to me, but I guess that's my load runner fan speaking. Uh, but as you progress, you see more and more different twists on this formula. In fact, at some point you'll even see the axis happens to split the level horizontally instead of vertically. So you can see that they're going to mix it up quite a bit as this uh, goes on. So the first real enemy here we've got is some skulls. And you saw in the last level we pick up some pickaxes, so we're actually able to dig through blocks. Uh, those don't seem to come up a ton, but they steadily introduce more and more new elements, and I have a feeling as this game gets much, much harder, it's going to actually use all of the elements at once. So this level, you'll see, has these little grabbing handles to get up this cliff. And now that I'm on the cliff, switch the level, and I can get to those last three pixels to finish. And this level introduces the concept that you can climb a ladder halfway, rotate it, and finish climbing on the other side, which is kind of cool. And we've also got, very much like Load Runner, those uh, vines, or I don't know what you want to call them, monkey bars that you can shimmy across. Um, now, I mean, looking at this game, it's actually very beautiful. It, it doesn't seem like there's much going on, but everything sort of emits this soft glow. And when you add on to the fact that it's... It's very... it's flat, but it's 3D at the same time. It's got a retro-style sort of polygonal, pixelized sprite kind of thing going on, which I haven't seen too many other games really execute very well. And this is the level I mentioned that actually breaks on the horizontal axis, so you can see how you can actually change... Uh, it's almost like changing gravity, so you're actually walking on the underside of the level, but, you know, your perspective is that it's always going to be the top. And you can very easily just flip yourself right off the bottom of the world. So things are getting a little bit more complex here. Uh, we've actually added phantom pixels now that your shadow self can pick up. And you'll see those will pop up in a bunch of different places. Some places that are quite hard to get to. And you can even use your level flipping defensively like I just did there get on the other side of that skull and flip, and then you're safe. And this is another interesting use of the vertical flip. Oh, except I wasn't paying attention, and that red skull up above me actually shoots uh, little lasers down at you, almost Space Invader style. Not too hard to avoid, they don't really shoot them a ton, but you just gotta be aware of what's going on around you. So what do we have this time? It looks like we're getting dynamite now. And this little guy here wants to tell me about how to use it. And I gotta watch out for these skull projectiles that are now shooting across. Uh, you can very easily blow yourself up in this, just like most games that use dynamite. So let's grab all these pixels. And then make my way through the wall. And of course I have just enough dynamite to be able to grab those, then flip the world to finish it off. So the puzzles may not be super complex at the beginning, but they already show a very clever design. And the symmetry of everything is really sort of interesting. I mean, some of this will take a little bit of trial and error, but there's a, a lot to be uh, seen as you go on, and they just keep adding and adding more concepts to think about. 
This level tries to mix it up a little bit, and I actually didn't pick up on it right away. But you'll see those uh, glowing blue diamond shapes. You actually can't pick those up with your shadow self, and you actually can't rotate to get them. They stay put no matter what you do. So I'm kind of lost for words as to what to do next. I'm rotating, I'm rotating, I'm rotating, nothing happens, so... Uh, Eventually make a poor jump and have to do that over. So the next logical step would be to stop getting shot and actually <laughs> jump over that gap in the middle to see about possibly grabbing them. Also kind of interesting that the physics change on a per level basis, at least to a small degree. Uh, sometimes you're able to jump slightly higher than in other times. And it's always at the point when you really need to jump the most that you can't jump that high. So this time we've got to mix up a little bit of the flippable ladders with the mining picks. And see about possibly getting into some of those nooks on the side. Unfortunately it doesn't appear that you can dig directly to your left or right, only under you. Which I wasn't quite getting at first. Now, if I was smart, I would have just flipped the level right there, and I could have grabbed that other mining pick, but it doesn't really matter since I gotta go back up anyway. Wait for the skull to pass. And the game's very generous, you know, when you die, you just basically start right over on the same level, so it's not like it gets frustrating. You don't really lose much of any progress, just what you did a second ago. So I wasn't paying a ton of attention, but I only had two mining picks there, which uh, makes me one short to get down into that cubby hole. So we're going to have to grab that last pick down at the bottom. So let's line up and flip. And then I can go right back up, and I think you can probably figure out the rest from there. But you can see in just a few levels things have already gotten quite a bit harder. And now we have a new type of pixel to pick up. I don't know, maybe you can guess already what this one does. <laughs> it's a bomb. I think it took me a few tries actually to get away from those successfully. Not that they're super hard or anything, I was just still not quite exactly sure how far the explosive radius on them was. And I play it kind of safe with this one, I'd rather not get too involved with flipping a lot when I can just as easily hang back. Although it does make for slightly less compelling gameplay footage, I have to admit. And there we go. So this one actually threw me for a loop for a little bit. Again, not that it's super hard, but I was just having trouble sort of conceptualizing what I needed to do with my hands to get the coordination going. So you can see there's those uh, hand holds on either side, but you actually have to flip on that one right there and then keep going up. But I was sort of struggling with flipping and then dropping down to grab the one on the right side so my actual self could grab the real pixel and my shadow self could grab the shadow pixel or what you, whatever you would like to call them. And I very much enjoyed the music on this as well. It definitely sets the tone. Nothing distracting, but it always adds to the ambience. And I think that's important for a puzzle game, and especially a, a retro puzzle game, I think it really does set the tone, even maybe more so than sometimes the graphical cues do. And I think this pretty much nails it. In fact, all the sound effects are pretty well dead on. I would say as far as the whole package of this game, it's very well developed, and it feels very cohesive. So yeah, for anyone who's out and really into puzzle games, this is uh, definitely one for you guys to try. And unfortunately this level's taking me way too long to get through, uh, but it's really not that hard, trust me. <laughs> 
So we are doing something a little special for this episode. Uh, we're actually going to be giving away three keys for this game uh, for commenters who have watched the episode and just leave a comment saying you'd like to grab the game and you will be considered for that giveaway. So that will be the last level that we'll be tackling for this short look and there's a lot more levels to go. And I highly recommend that you check it out. Leave a comment in the comment section below, and we will see you later.